What is going on to the AMC stock family? In today's video, we will be talking about AMC and how it is just time ticking at this point because of how much option activity there is currently for this one equity. And this is going to be a 48 hour warning. And remember 48 hours, well, why so? That's because every time there's an option chain activity, it usually expires every Friday of the week, unless there is a different type of option activity going over for the next week and the weeks to come, or sometimes even months to come. There are some option activities that go all the way until 2022. Keep all that in mind because this is all going to be very important. Now let's start off over here. What is really having a lot of the call options right now? A lot of that is flowing into the S&P 500, Tesla, and then also CVS, Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of the big cap stocks, but don't get me wrong because if we also go over here, it immediately tells us the meme stocks, okay? And what is in this list? It is at the top of the page. We have Apple, then we have AMC, we have AMD, and even Amazon and Alibaba. It's actually not really that much of a meme stock. And Jim Cramer, he actually agrees with this as well. So if we go over here to AMC, the reason why I truly believe it is not that much of a meme stock anymore is because the fundamentals are improving. I've said this a lot. However, I need to reiterate it because some people are saying that AMC should be worth one cent. Yes, you heard that right, one cent. And you guys will hear for yourselves, these people that are saying that AMC should be worth one cent. And then you guys will also be able to understand that Jim Cramer, he actually did disagrees with people saying that AMC should be worth one cent, which is very interesting because in the beginning, remember, everyone was hating just on AMC and now the story is starting to change where more people are starting to get involved in the community and they're the ones buying AMC or they're the ones saying that AMC is not a meme stock. It is actually a good stock and there is a lot of resiliency to continue allowing the stock to go higher and higher. And Jim Cramer, he recognizes that and he says that AMC has a high probability of going up or in other words, continuing to increase in share price, whereas other investors, and again, you guys will hear for yourselves, they are saying that AMC should really be worth one cent, one cent a share. Anyways, let's talk about the option activities. So over here, we have the call options versus the put options. In total, just on Wednesday, we have 38.9 million dollars flowing in. Now this is divided into two sectors. So this is going to be the call option side and also the put option side. The call option side makes up 25.6 million dollars. Whereas the put option side currently it makes up 13.3 million dollars. And the volume on all this activity is 331,000 400. Now, if we go over here, a lot of this really makes a lot of sense because sometimes the call option, they truly do work and they allow you to understand the market sentiment. That's really what's important because I remember strictly when AMC was trading at $35 a share, the highest volume option call was actually the $75 strike price. It was either $70 or $75 strike price. AMC in just two days later went to $70 a share. It actually went to 72 and maybe a few cents higher than that. But regardless, you guys understand my point. So sometimes these call options, they really do allow the traders to understand what the market sentiment is like because we don't have the dark pools, right? We can't understand what's going on in the outside trading platforms. We're not going to be focusing on dark pools in today's video. What I just wanted to make clear though, is that this week, which is going to be expiry, this is going to be the October 22nd of 2021. We currently have a $42 call option chain and this is going to be a $2.2 million option chain activity. And also if you go over here, October 22nd of 2021, we also have the $41 calls and these are right now totaling to 1.9 million. And so these two are very, very close in the range. Usually this doesn't really happen for MC. However, because there's so much volume and because there's just so much premium, this is when the data tells us that, wait a minute, these really are the two option chain activities where a lot of people are buying AMC. And that's exactly that because usually in other scenarios, we see that AMC will have a $42 call option, for example, and then it will follow with possibly a $38 call option. We don't see any more $38 a share in this option chain anymore, right? We don't see $35 a share. We don't even see $30 a share, right? It is just between 42 and 41. Or at least this is the one with the highest amount of volume behind it. And so if these two are the ones with the highest amount of volume behind it, what does that indicate to us? We also do have the green arrows. One of them is pointing to 1.4 thousand increase. And then the other arrow is pointing to a 253 increase. So I think this is why these are the only two options that are really being promoted. And so that is why I think that these two are the only option chains so far, right? We have the $41 puts, we have the $40 calls, we have the $43 calls. But you see, as we go down, these don't really have a lot of volume. So that's really the important concept in today's video. The volume, where's the volume flowing into? A lot of the flow is really important. And to answer that question, a lot of that is flowing into this Friday, October 22nd, both the $42 call option and the $41 call option. Many are expecting AMC to continue to hold around this $40 share range, possibly even the high $38 share range. It really doesn't matter that much because it will be close to a strike price as 
long as AMC is hovering around this area, all these people that decide to buy these call options, they will be fine. And so therefore the volume will not be wasted and it will not indicate a false sentiment because we don't want to go to Friday and then all of a sudden AMC drops to $35 a share because that'll be very damaging to all these buyers and all this volume of people that decide to buy call options expiring this Friday. And just one more indication before we go on to what Jim Cramer had to say, look at over here, right? 9.30 in the morning. This is when so many people decide to buy call options, which is actually also very interesting because usually the market open, yes, it is the most volatile. However, it is also very dangerous because you don't know which way the market is going to go. However, as soon as the market opened, here's another circumstance where you could have used the sentiment of the call options versus the put options. And you could have used this ratio to understand there were so many more call option buyers. And what did AMC do? Well, because there were more call options, this was one of the variables that allowed the price action to continue to increase for the AMC share price all the way until almost 12 p.m. Absolutely phenomenal. And again, this is why this is so helpful. And so here's what one investor said about AMC and how it should be worth one cent a share. Saying AMC is headed to a penny a share. Rich Greenfield of Lightshed Partners joins us now. Rich, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Melissa. This has been a crazy uh, 24 hours. Well, I was going to say, between the Fubo call you had uh, last year <laughs> and the AMC to a penny call, I, I hope you have security cameras installed around your home. You know, Fubo's down, you know, pretty meaningfully from, you know, where we put a sell on it back in, in December. Uh, it's obviously been very volatile, but it's down pretty dramatically over the course of the past couple of months. And I think if you look at AMC theaters, you know, we've been looking at sort of the, the rise in the stock as, as investors seem excited by the reopening. What they're missing is that this is not Cinemark. Cinemark's actually got a very good, you know, very good balance sheet. AMC is eight times levered. They will never generate meaningful free cash flow. There is no value to equity holders. People can buy it because they're excited about going back to theaters, but there is no value to this company. And ultimately, that's what's going to matter is they can't pay off their debt ever. You also mentioned, of course, the secular headwinds facing all of the movie industry, and that's shorter release times, direct-to-consumer yep. releases uh, via video streaming, um, et cetera, et cetera. So the same old sort of arguments working against the movie theaters, but it seems like the leverage is really what got you for AMC putting it well, at a penny a share. Well, I would step back for a second. Okay. This company generated $770 million of EBITDA before the pandemic. So go right. back to 2019. Now think about what's happened. Forget about lingering health concerns. I'm sure at some point we're all going to feel comfortable doing what we did before the pandemic, whether that's 2022 or 2023. I'm not smart enough to know that answer. What I do know, though, is that executives like Jeff Shell, who runs your parent company, NBC Universal, Bob Chapik, who runs Disney, Jason Kylar, who runs Warner Media, Bob Backus, who runs Viacom CBS, all of them have said very publicly in the last several weeks, the consumer has spoken. We are not going back to pre-pandemic release windows. We are going to get movies sooner into the home and really empower the consumer with more choice. The end result is attendance levels are just never going to be. And so that 770 million of EBITDA is never going to be achievable again. And even if it was, they can't pay off their debt. But if they can't get close to that level, this thing literally is worth it, you know, can't cover its debt, let alone have any value for equity holders. And that's really why we put the penny stock target on there for 12 months. Yeah. And the penny, let's be clear, is based on your 8.2 times 2022 adjusted EBITDA estimates. And, and you're saying that Correct. that could even be generous. So basically you're saying, I mean, we're basically saying this, this company, company can't cover gonna, its debt. Right. It's going to go bankrupt. Ultimately, now it'll be a slow bleed because they don't have near term pressure. They've gotten a lot of relief. So they have a long time before they go bankrupt, which is why basically you put it at a penny. But the reality, because I'm not saying this company is going to file for bankruptcy in the next 12 months, but this is a company that doesn't seem to have any way to repay. Remember, it's got $5 billion of debt right now. It's got a mountain of deferred rent, hundreds of millions of dollars of deferred rent because it couldn't pay its rent over the last 12 months. I don't see any way with shortening release windows. I mean, every one of these studios is realizing the major driver of SVOD mm -hmm. is big movies. You know, you look at Soul for Disney, Hamilton, Wonder Woman, The Matrix is coming to HBO Max. All of these movies direct to consumer, directly into your home at no extra cost. The idea that you're going to go see as many movies at these prices in theaters, 
I think that's a pipe dream. Right. It's just not going to happen. Let me let me ask you this, because I, I did see this tweet earlier, and I understand that you've since deleted it, but everything lives forever sure. when it comes to the Internet. Right. You tweeted earlier today, down 65 cents. Well, clearly, this is during the session. Only $9.84 sure. left to go. Are you in any sure. way cheering against this stock? I mean, I have to ask you this because of that tweet and just sure. because, you know, the high interest in this particular stock. We don't. I mean, look, we have I think, as you've seen, Melissa, with us going back uh, really our whole careers, when we make a big call, we mean it. And we're going to swing until we admit we're wrong on a name. Uh, we've been very vocal in our views on Fubo. Uh, obviously, that was a very controversial call. I think we've been very correct in that view so far. Obviously, ultimately, we'll see whether it ultimately gets to our, our price target of 650. But when we believe a stock is meaningfully undervalued, mm -hmm. take Snapchat. We put a buy on it in the teens. Right. Now it's a stock that's up multiple times that. The same thing with Twitter at 16. We went on positive. And we talked, actually, I think you had us on the show back in January, sure. people fearing sort of what it meant for Trump with Trump you know, being banned. And we said you had to buy Twitter. Yep. It's been a home run stock okay. on the long side. So we get very vocal when we believe in a stock, both long and short. That's what Lightshed yep. does.